The FBI in Peace and War. The FBI in Peace and War is brought to you by healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint every day, as millions do. The lively, long-lasting flavor freshens your mouth and sweetens your breath. The pleasant chewing eases tension, helps you feel better, and get more enjoyment out of what you're doing. Another great story based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. Drama, thrills, action. Tonight's story, The Literary Touch. That'll be all, sir? Yes, that's all, thank you. Uh, Pay the cashier, please. Thank you. Oh, uh, a young man. Uh, Yes, sir? You're a student here, aren't you? Uh, That's right, sir. (laughs) I hope you don't mind my asking. Do you uh, take any history courses? Sure. History 154. Social change since the Civil War. History 154. Now, let's see. Who teaches that? It's uh, Professor... uh... Uh, Boulder. Amos Boulder. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Boulder, of course. Uh, He's... uh... They're quite an authority in the field, isn't he? Oh, he sure is. He wrote a couple of books. We use one of them for text. Is that so? Yeah, it's called The Economic Consequences of Constitutional Interpretation. It's a Lulu. <laughs> uh, it sounds pretty formidable. Yeah, real rough going if you try without black coffee. <laughs> I can imagine. Do they sell it here at the uh, bookstore? Sure, you can buy it if you got six bucks and a strong pair of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Man. Oh, that's okay, sir. Thank you. The Economic Consequences of Constitutional Interpretation by Professor Amos Boulder. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? The highest perch on the criminal social ladder is occupied by the swindler. And of all the fancy swindlers on record, none was more distinguished than Wallace Evans Malsby, born Walter Fiegelhammer. During his numerous short terms in prison, Malsby read a great many books and acquired a literary veneer that was useful in his racket. His victims were mostly writers and college professors, a gullible segment of the population. And then he quoted to me from my own book, and I couldn't very well dispute with an authority now, could I? (laughs) Could I, Thelma? No, dear, of course not. Uh, Thelma, dear, I was trying to make a joke. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, my love. But, Amos, darling, what did the man want? Huh? What what did he come to see you about? Oh, well, I'm I'm coming to that. It's really quite exciting. Uh, Thelma, I don't think we want this to get around the campus. Not for a while, anyway. Of course not. Uh, I haven't told you what it is yet. I know. What is it, dear? Well, now, this Mr. Malsby, incidentally, he was rather impressed with my chapter on Theodore Roosevelt and the Panama Canal. That's a very good chapter. Yes. Mr. Malsby is quite a well-known publisher, and he's launching a new magazine, Historical Horizons. About history. Yes, dear. It's going to be very handsome, the way he describes it. Two dollars an issue, I believe, Twelve issues a year. But can we afford it, Amos? Thelma, dear, he he doesn't want me to buy a subscription to the magazine. He wants me to be editor-in-chief. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. When do you start? Well, now, the magazine isn't even published yet. Mr. Malsby is just lining up the staff. Oh, it sounds terribly exciting, Amos. I think it is. He's going to talk to some other men in our field. I uh, gave him a few names. Editor-in-chief. Oh, can't I tell anybody, Amos? Not a soul, Thelma, now. Not till I sign the contract. Uh, Mr. Malsby doesn't want any publicity until the right moment. When will that be? Well, I don't know, dear. Uh, Evidently, there are many factors in organizing a magazine of this scope. As Mr. Malsby explained it, there are what he calls uh, angles. And uh, where exactly do I fit into this angle, Mr. Malsby? Well, I'm coming to that, Professor. (laughs) Very sensible. I I have a class in exactly five minutes. Oh, really? Do you mind if I sit in? Afraid you'll be bored. I'm going to talk about a rather obscure gentleman, the Emperor Barbarossa. Frederick I of Germany. Oh, you know Frederick? (laughs) Well, not uh, intimately. But I got quite interested after reading your monograph in the library. Well, did you now? Yes, I... uh... Especially like the way you handled his attitude um, toward the Second Crusade. Really? Mm, yes. 
And uh, that's exactly the type of thing we want to do in uh, historical horizons. Might boil it down, eh? That is, if you think it would be acceptable. Well, that uh, wouldn't be up to me, Professor. That would be up to our editor. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, have you anybody in mind? Our editor? Oh, oh, yes, indeed I have. He ought to be a man with a good, solid background, both modern and classical. Yes, I quite agree. And I think I have just the person. And who's that? You. Me? That's right, Professor Duncan. Editor? Editor-in-chief. Me? Of course, if you uh, accept this offer, I'll have to ask you not to tell anyone until we've signed a contract. You see, when my publicity is ready... And do I... I understand that you want me well, as the editor? I don't know anyone better qualified for the job. Do you? Uh, no, frankly, I don't. <laughs> well, uh, if you'd like a few days to uh, think this over... And would my name uh, be at the top of the masthead? It would. Oh, I'd sure like to see Amos Boulder's face the first time he gets a look at that. Well, I'm sure Professor Boulder would be the first to congratulate you. I doubt it. Amos always wanted to teach over here at the university, but he's just not up to our caliber. He's always been envious of me. Oh, this will kill him. Uh, in that case, I'll have to ask you to be doubly sure not to mention my offer to anyone until we've signed the contract. Not a word, Mr. Molesby, I promise you. Oh, um, by the way, I, uh, I assume that there's a certain amount of money connected with this. <laughs> yes, there is. Good. Well, you come along and sit in my class, Mr. Molesby, and after we get through with Barbarossa, we'll talk about money. I always think money is an interesting subject, too. Back to the literary touch in just a moment. You know, friends, one reason you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum is that it helps to keep your mouth feeling so fresh and clean. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley Spearmint is really cooling and refreshing. Besides, the chewing itself gives you comfort because it helps to keep your mouth and throat pleasingly moist. Helps keep your teeth clean and bright, too. Try it and see for yourself. Chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum while you work, while driving your car, out walking, and in your home. See how this delicious chewing gum helps to keep your mouth feeling fresh, cool, and clean. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Get some next time you go to the store. And now, Act Two of tonight's story, The Literary Touch. As the nation's number one literary swindler, Wallace Malsby's picture was almost standard decoration in post offices all over the country. As a result of this display, the owner of a small printing shop in downtown New York came forward with some very useful information. Well, you could have knocked me over with a breath of air, practically. I said to my brother-in-law, you know, he works for me, but strictly as a relative, not from talent. I said, look, Alfred, isn't that picture Mr. Malsby, the historical horizons fella? Historical Horizons? Yeah. That's how I remember a customer from whatever he has printed on his stationery. He had stationery that said Historical Horizons, a magazine of distinction. Do you have a copy of this stationery, Mr. Keeley? Sure, I gotta keep a copy. Yeah, every a couple of months he sends me a new name to put on top of the masthead. We print everything the same, only we take this professor off the top of the list and put this professor in his place. Uh, here's his last order. Uh, what's the date on that? September 14th, two months ago. And where did you send that order? Just where it says here, the campus in Halstead, New Hampshire. Uh, say, Alfred was asking me, what's this guy's racket? And I couldn't even figure it out myself. What does he do? Well, it's a pretty slick operation, Mr. Keeley. Supposing you let us see that order, and then I'll tell you how it works. And so I said, uh, I see how it works, Mr. Malsby, but I'm not sure that I'm in a position. Uh, Velma. Yes, dear? Do you understand a word of what I'm saying? But of course, Mr. Malsby wants everybody on the staff of the magazine to have a few shares of stock so they'll feel a sense of ownership and responsibility. Uh, well, it's not quite as simple as that. Now, he's not giving away the shares, you know. Uh, I'd have to buy them uh, for cash. Oh, yes, dear. Uh, Thelma, $3,500 is a lot of money. Oh, I know it is, Amos, but it's not doing us any good in the bank. But what about that trip to Mexico? I've been promising you Mexico for five years now. I don't want Mexico, Amos. I want you to have what you deserve. Oh, Thelma, you are completely impossible. You do everything for my good. 
You never complain. You don't exceed your allowance. You drive the car carefully. And you listen to my opinionated opinions. What's the matter with you? I don't know, dear. Do you really want me to be the editor of Historical Horizons? You worked so hard for recognition, Amos. Well, I suppose I have. But after all, $3,500 isn't so much. How much do you think we've got in that savings account? $3,608. The magazine could fail, you know. A lot of them do. Not if you were editor. Thelma, why do you have this fantastic confidence in me? I'm nothing but a bumbler, really, teaching in a small-time school like this. No, way. Well, I am. Look at the other men who started with me. Jeffrey Duncan, head of a department at the university. Charlie Sims. Uh, why don't you ask Jeffrey what he thinks, Amos? Uh, Jeffrey? Oh, I couldn't possibly. Uh, besides, Mr. Malsby said that he doesn't want anyone to know. Well, you could just drop into his office someday. Uh, the university, my dear, is exactly 41 miles from here. Well, you know what I mean. Yes, I know, but I'll just have to make up my mind without Jeffrey Duncan. All right, dear. But you know something, Thelma? What, dear? I'd sure like to see the look on Jeffrey's face when he reads my name on the top of that masthead. It would be worth the money just for that. A quick phone check of the campus inn at Halstead, New Hampshire sounded promising So Agent Reynolds and I went up there with Malby's picture When we found we had missed him by only a week Our next move was to interview members of the faculty To see if a swindle was in operation It was, and doing very nicely Well, Amos Boulder of all people Come in, Amos, come in <laughs> Well, what are you doing down here at the university? Well, I had some things to look up in your library, Jeffrey, and I thought if you weren't busy... Busy? Uh... I have absolutely nothing to do. Just a few hundred papers to correct, a faculty lunch at one, a lecture tonight at the auditorium... Oh, now, if you're busy, I... <laughs> oh, I'm never too busy for you, Amos. Say, how is Thelma? Oh, she's fine. We just have to get together for dinner sometime. Grace was saying just the other night, what do Amos and Thelma do with themselves in a small town like Greenwood? <laughs> well, Amos, we... I'm glad you dropped in. I uh, want to ask your advice about something. Well, sure, Jeffrey, as a matter of fact, I want to ask your advice on something. Did you ever think of quitting teaching, Amos? Quitting? I never thought I would, but I... I I can count on your discretion, can't I, old well, man? Of course, Jeffrey, but you're not going I to... I don't want this to get around naturally. But I've been offered something really big, Amos. Something I've always wanted, and in my own field, too. Well, you know, it's funny you should say that, Jeffrey, because it just Do so you believe happens... in self-investment, Amos? How is that? Well, it's a phrase I coined for my present situation. I'm thinking of investing some money in a, well, a business proposition, which would be under my supervision, but I wouldn't own it directly. You know, it's very strange you should ask me a question like that, Jeffrey, because well, a man I... should believe in his own power, shouldn't he? You've certainly never lacked confidence, Jeffrey. Frankly, I don't see how you could fail at anything. <laughs> Neither do I, Amos. And on your advice, I intend to plunge into this venture and see it through to the finish. Well, that's fine, Jeffrey. And of course, you wish me the best of luck. That's all I've ever done, isn't it? You have, Amos. You're a fine friend. Uh-oh. There's my Egyptian culture and Ptolemaic influence. All right, come walk down to the class with me and you can tell me what you wanted advice about. I still have three minutes. What's your trouble, old man? Uh, nothing, Duncan. I... I guess I can work it out my own way. Back to the literary touch in just a moment. Friends, here's a modern, sensible way to satisfy that little hungry feeling you sometimes get between meals, especially when you want to go light. Chew a stick of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. You see, Wrigley Spearmint Gum is never rich or filling, Yet it does satisfy your taste and give you that little pickup you want. Helps to tide you over until mealtime. It's one reason why Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum is the favorite between meal treat of millions. Always keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint Gum right with you. And when you get that little hungry feeling but want to go light, chew a stick of this good tasting gum. That's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> Three of tonight's story, The Literary Touch. After we had talked to 
a few of the professors at Halstead, it became obvious that Malsby was making a grand tour of New England colleges setting up his swindle. From a taxi driver, we found that Malsby had gone from Halstead to nearby Glenwood. And in Glenwood, where we talked with faculty families, it was the same story. And so naturally, I encouraged Amos because he's worked so hard and he deserves recognition. How much money did your husband intend to invest, Mrs. Balder? $3,500, I believe. I see. I know it's a lot of money, and I suppose a historical magazine could be a somewhat risky venture. In this case, Mrs. Balder, it's a little more than somewhat. Really? Mrs. Balder, Wallace Malsby is a swindler, wanted in three states for fraud. A what? Swindler. Oh, no. I'm afraid you've made a mistake. Mr. Malsby is a publisher. Mrs. Boulder. Oh, he's president of Malsby Publications. Their office is at 885 West 44th Street in New York. 885 West 44th Street is a parking lot, Mrs. Boulder. But how could it be if that's where Mr. Malsby has his office? Mr. Malsby hasn't got an office, and he's not a publisher. He didn't want your husband as an editor... He wanted $3,500. Oh, but he couldn't. That would be terribly dishonest. Mr. Malsby is a very dishonest man, Mrs. Balder. In fact, he's a crook. You mean all the time he was coming here to dinner? That's right. And I gave him the same sherry I use on alumni night for President Henley. Oh, poor Amos. What, what is he going to say when he finds out he was counting on this so very much? So were several other professors. Oh, Amos will just about die. He, he even put $11 down on a new typewriter. Well, luckily you didn't lose your 3500 Oh, yes. I was going to take it out of the bank today, or maybe it was tomorrow. And... Oh, dear, you don't suppose... Oh, excuse me, please. We couldn't have. That would be just too terrible. He just... He did. Did what, Mrs. Boulder? He took the savings bank book. Are you sure? Oh, it's always right here in the pigeonhole. Oh, my, this is really distressing, isn't it? You'd better get in touch with your husband right away, Mrs. Boulder. Oh, I most certainly will. I'll call his office and see if they know where he is. Poor Amos. He would have made such a fine editor, wouldn't he? And that's why I dropped in, Jeffrey. I wanted you to be the first to know. Well, it must be something pretty important, Amos, if you drove 40 miles just to drop in. I, I guess it is, Jeffrey. Well, let's have it, old man. They've made you head of your department, eh? Congratulations. No, 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 that, that isn't it. Well, it's got to be, old man. After all, you've been down there at Glenwood for 20 years. It's about time. Jeffrey, that... sometimes your lack of tact is a little more than appalling. I beg your pardon, Amos? After all, 20 years isn't too much to give to a subject if the end is rewarding. Quite true, quite true, and I apologize. Well, now, tell me the good news. Uh, well, it's not exactly for publication just yet, Jeffrey. In fact, I haven't even notified the college. Don't tell me you've written another book, Amos. Uh, no, 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 not that, Jeffrey. But just two hours ago, I signed a contract to edit one of the foremost academic publications in America. Did you say edit? That's right. <laughs> well, now, really, Jeffrey, I don't see anything funny in that. No, of course you don't, but but it really is funny, old man. Well, I fail to see it. I am just as capable... Of course you are, of course, old man. But the funny part is that I am now at liberty to accept congratulations on the very same score. I, too, am about to join the editorial fraternity. Oh. <laughs> really? Yes, I'm expecting the publisher here any moment to sign my contract. Well, what do you know? Congratulations, Jeffrey. Well, thank you. <laughs> so we're both taking the plunge, huh? That's right, old man. <laughs> Say, why don't I buy an article from you and you buy one from me? Wonderful. We'll do it. After all, your subject is history. And what more fitting vehicle for your talents than my historical horizons? Uh? Historical horizons. That is the name of my publication. Historical... Horizons? Yes. Rather fetching title, isn't it? I help select it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I... I... Amos, are you ill? Yes. Well, what's the matter, old man? Amos, close your mouth, old fellow. You look rather like an idiot. Um, I am. What? I am, and so are you. So am I what? An idiot. Well, now, really, Amos. We both are vain, egotistical, pompous old idiots. I am not old. And furthermore, I And don't... furthermore, you're not editor of Historical's Horizons either. I, I, I beg your pardon? I said... I know you did, and if I am not, who is? I am. What? I just signed this contract two hours ago. Huh? Now, go ahead. Look at it. Oh. Old man, something is definitely amiss. No, I know. Uh, old man. Huh? Oh, excuse me. I'm going right ahead. Uh, hello? Oh, yes. Um, it's for you. Thank you. Old man. Uh, don't mention it. Hello? Oh, hello, dear. Yes, I... 
I just dropped in on Jeffrey to... What? Yes, dear, yes, in a roundabout way, I just found out the same thing. Yes, it is rather distressing, but... Uh... Oh? Oh, they did? Well, that's good. Yes, of course, I'll drive right back. Oh, uh, uh, Thelma, uh, tell them I'm bringing Professor Duncan with me. Huh? He, uh, he's just as big a fool as I am. Yes, dear. Uh, goodbye. I, I would like an explanation of this whole thing, uh, Amos. So would I, Jeffrey. Two FBI men have just arrested Dr. Malsby, and they're waiting at my house to talk to me, uh, or rather, to us. Oh. Uh, come along, Jeffrey. You know, I think this is going to be a rather painful interview, and uh, <clears throat> we, uh... Editors must stick together. Faced with four angry professors, a phony contract, and $3,500 stolen an hour before his arrest, Wallace Malsby decided that a plea of guilty was the better part of valor. He received a three-year term in prison where he is currently employed in the library, brushing up, no doubt, for another... Literary touch. Remember, friends, to help keep your mouth feeling fresh and clean, chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. There's lots of lively, refreshing flavor in it. And you can chew a stick just about any time in any place. Then, too, while you're sinking your teeth into this good-tasting gum, the natural chewing action is helping to keep your teeth clean and bright. Next time you're at the store, get some packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Get plenty for your whole family, because Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a perfect all-family treat. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Tonight's story, Bill Smith played the part of Amos Boulder, and Walter Grise was Jeffrey Duncan. This radio dramatization for the FBI in Peace and War was written by Louis Pelletier. These programs are produced and directed by Betty Mandeville. All names and characters used on the program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This program is based upon Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. And the broadcast does not imply endorsement, authorization, or approval by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you real chewing enjoyment, invite you to listen to next Wednesday's story, Expert Testimony on the FBI in Peace and War. Same time, same station. This is the CBS Radio Network.